Hi, this is Andy DeGrucci. I'm in Tamaqua at Zion uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church on Mock Chunk Street in Greenwood. And uh, I was called in here uh, maybe six or eight years ago uh, to look at some conditions that were occurring on the church. Uh, this church was uh, built uh, turn of the last century and uh, there was an option on the table at the time to uh, do a lot of the trim details around the stone, uh, uh, the, the, the entire stone structure, the, the um, trim elements which are around window surrounds and door surrounds and to do them not out of Indiana limestone which is traditional but to use a new material that's come out uh, it's called cast stone it's a stone where God makes uh, Indiana limestone and limestone and stones but man decides okay we think we can make stones ourselves and they decide to make cast stone which is basically concrete stone so uh, sounded good because it was cost savings involved and the church uh, did do that well-meaning and uh, seemed like a good thing to do but as a hundred years went by we see that these cast stones are exfoliating and falling apart and uh, causing uh, some uh, dangerous situations uh, the church uh, had been aware of that and uh, had tried to remedy the situation a few times um, the uh, issue seemed to get worse uh, some of the, the new patches were falling off. So we were called in and uh, we, we are bringing to the table what was our remedy. The simplest answer and the original answer was the best answer. And that answer for masonry is usually to do things the old way, the traditional way. And so we're known in our work at DeGrucci Masonry Inc. as doing work that uses traditional materials like lime mortars that don't contain modern, modern Portland cement. Um, these stones that are cast stone on the church were built with a early cement. Uh, there's a difference between early cement and even the modern concrete we'd have today. It's not the same. Uh, the things that make a cement uh, meet uh, what will be uh, designated as Portland cement might have fillers that like fly ash and things that uh, still make you get under the wire as meeting the minimum requirements but cause all, can cause all kinds of other issues that we didn't expect or know and they're finding out. So as things get better and better and new and improved, they find out it's worse and worse and we should have just done what we always did for like a thousand years. <laughs> fell off in my opinion is that uh, sulfates salts that expand uh, and water that's ever present in the stonework here for some reason which is still something they're trying to figure out where it's coming in from uh, all over but the the, uh, the concrete uh, gets an expansion that's going on within the concrete and that concrete is then uh, you know the winter months when water freezes it expands and it will push off even the strongest patch you know in hydraulics you can lift a car in the air in a hydraulic lift because it's uh it's basically the power of uh hydraulics and water uh, if it wants to freeze and move things it'll dig the grand canyon it'll move something right out of its way so the patches are falling off and the difference between our patches the things that we're doing this go around is that we import our base material from france which is lime based and lime kind of like a piece of coral has holes in it it is strong, it can be 3,000 psi, it can be very durable, but when it drinks water in, it releases water back out. And so the, the problem with modern cements is they become impervious, and they hold water back in and don't let it out. Say, water, sorry, find another way. So a lot of times water says, guess what? I'm freezing, I'm gonna pop you right off the wall. Okay, so down here we replaced uh, almost everything down here. This was a real mess. Everything was just crumbling and falling apart. These particular pieces right here, here, all four of them, there was nothing left. I couldn't even figure out what they looked like until I went to the other side of the church and saw one so I could replicate it. And I had to rebuild, rebuild all them, all these corner pieces, nothing was there, all loose, falling off. And when we demoed it, it was so soft, we took off a lot more than was even falling off just so we could get back to a nice solid surface to build on and none of, none of these here were here They're all all falling apart just ready to fall off at any moment i mean it could have been chunks falling 
any day. And we had to rebuild that. And then we went, we did go ahead and we repainted everything with our potassium silicate paint. So it's breathable. So if there's any moisture in there, it can come through still and it's not gonna create any more damage to our uh, litho mix that we have behind there. What's happened and we believe this go around with the repairs we've done, where we have uh, taken off all the corroded, rotted patches and gone back to the original stone. We have then grain strengthened the original stone with something called water glass, which goes in and sort of uh, takes up this, the void, this uh, space that's between the, uh, the, the aggregate and the full matrix of what is that cast stone, and then refurbishes it with uh, something that will stabilize or condition it before the repair. So we did that, and then we used an armature, which is stainless steel threaded rods and wire. And we actually in, uh, drilled into the, the cast stone and installed this uh, armatures. And then what we did was we used this material that has a higher vapor permeability than is modern Portland cement, and we repaired the stone. So we're, we're, we're trying to, in the end, give the repair all the hope that we can, belt and suspenders in repair, in that we are mechanically fastening it to the other stone, but we're also, in a chemistry way, wanting it to not be so uh, rigid that it won't allow trap water to escape. And then we are also trying to stabilize first, before we did any of those two things, the uh, existing stone, uh, cast stone, before these repairs were made upon it. So that, in a nutshell, and that was a quick nutshell, day one, but that's what we just did here at Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tamaqua. Hi, this is Andy. Sign up for weekly hands-on workshops to practice and perfect this and other associated techniques with LineWorks US.